If you've ever taken a physics class, you've probably been exposed at least a little bit to the idea of vectors. And vectors are one of the most foundational ideas, not just in physics, but in a whole range of concepts. So what exactly are they? The idea of a vector is something that tells you both a length and a direction. For instance, if we were talking about velocity vectors, you might want to know which direction are you going and how fast are you going in that direction. So you want to know both sort of a magnitude as well as a direction. The notation for a vector is usually either to put a little arrow on the top of it to sort of indicate that this is, this is meant to be an arrow that has sort of a direction associated to it. And then you write as coordinates, not with round brackets, the way you write points, you might write round bracket a1 comma a2, but you write these little alligator brackets, these little less than or, or greater than symbols. But, but what you're trying to do is you're trying to write a bracket that differentiates it from the bracket that we use for points. And in three dimensions, you're gonna have three components. In two dimensions, you're gonna have two components. In n dimensions, you'd have n components. And we're going to think of a vector as an arrow. So for example, in the two dimensional situation, I might have some point here and, and I'm gonna think of a point as being an a1 comma an a2. So in other words, it's got like an x component and it's got a y component. But, but that's not what a vector is. A vector is not a point. A vector is thought of as an arrow. So I can imagine the arrow that goes from the origin and it heads out towards this point a1, a2. And this arrow is what I am going to be calling a vector. And so it has some length. We can figure out that length from the Pythagorean formula. And it has a direction. We could figure out, for instance, what the angle theta was as well by using a little bit of trigonometry if we knew that it ended up at the point a1, a2. Now, part of the magic of vectors, part of the interesting part about thinking about it as as this thing that has both a length and a direction is that the particular presentation that I've shown here of starting at the origin and going out to the point a1, a2 is, is just one of many different ways to represent the same vector. For instance, consider this vector here. I'm going to call this also the vector a, and, and I say that because it has the same length and it has the same direction. Likewise, I'm going to say that this vector here is going in the same direction, has the same length. This vector over here is going in the same direction and the same length. So the like maybe canonical way to represent a vector is that it starts at the origin and it goes out to a tip who has coordinates, the a1, a2, a3. But you can slide it and translate it around as long as you don't change the direction or the magnitude couple of different facts about vectors. First of all, the length of a vector. I have a formula that should seem a little bit familiar to us. If there was only two components, just an a1 and an a2, the square root of a1 squared plus a2 squared, that's just the Pythagorean formula. The, the length of a triangle, of the hypotenuse of a triangle, is given, if it's a right triangle, by the Pythagorean theorem. And indeed, I get the sort of exact same analog, sort of like a generalized Pythagorean theorem. So we can imagine, for instance, that the length of the vector 1, 2, 2 is just going to be the square root of 1 squared plus 2 squared plus 2 squared, which is the same thing as the square root of 9, which is just equal to 3. I can also go and multiply my vector by a scalar k. So for example, if I have the point 1, 1 here, and I've got the vector that goes out to this particular point a11, then I could go along here and I could look at, for instance, maybe this one. This is going to go out to the point 3, 3, and that is just three times the vector a. It's each component multiplied by three. So multiplication of a vector by a scalar just it takes its magnitude and it multiplies it by the length of that scalar. Finally, we have the notion of the sum of two different vectors. And this is added up, they say, component-wise, where the first component of the sum is just the sum of the two different first components. The second component of the sum is the sum of the two second components, and the third component of the sum is the sum of the two third components. So I want to try to visualize what's going on here. Let me give one vector, and I'm going to put it out here. This is going to be the vector a 
is equal to an x component of 2 and a y component of 1. And then I'm also going to give a b vector, and I'm going to draw it over here. There's my b. And my b is going to have components. The x component is 1, and the y component is 2. But remember how I said I could, I could translate my vectors around, that they were a length and a direction, and the exact presentation of starting at zero and going out to the tip labeled 2, 1, or 1, 2 respectively, was just one of the different presentations. So the vector b that I have over here, I could also come along and write it over there. So this is truly another copy of the vector b. And when I write it this way, in fact, I might even go as far as to come along and erase the original b that I had. When I write it this way, it's added tip to tail. And then addition of these two vectors, it represents this vector, the, the vector that goes from the origin out to the end of this sort of tip to tail way of putting these vectors down. So, so this hypotenuse is going to be the vector a plus b. And in this particular case, the a plus b is, by my formula, going to be 2 plus 1 is 3, 2 plus 1 again, but the other way around, is 3 again. And so it is going from the origin out to the particular point 3, 3. So this is how I can, I can think of uh, vector addition. It's sort of like I take the different vectors, I all line them up tip to tail, and then wherever I get to, that is the end point of my vector back in the standard form, going from 0 out to this final end point. So keeping with this theme that I'm allowed to take my vectors and shift them around and translate them as long as I'm keeping their direction and their magnitude fixed, that that's allowed, imagine that I have two different points. One is a point P, and the other is going to be a point Q. And what I want to imagine is, what is the vector that goes between them from P out to Q? If I know the coordinates of P, if I know that they've got some pair of coordinates, and I know the coordinates of q, then what is this vector that goes between them? And the answer is this. We will often write it as pq with a little arrow hat. This is going to be equal to the vector, so I'm writing my triangle brackets here, of the first component of the q minus the first component of the p, the second component of the q minus the second component of the p, and the third component of the q minus the first component of the 3. So in this case, 0 minus 1 is minus 1, minus 1 minus 2 is minus 3, and 1 minus 1 is equal to 0.